morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity to participate here and be uh, for the first time in beautiful South Africa. Uh, the um, organizer have asked me to come with a review of the current literature about the stent position after urethroscopy. I thought I'll just give, shed some light about the development of, stone, of stenting and to acknowledge these gentlemen and milestones. In the early 1800s, Gustavus Simon has introduced the tube in, the, in an open bladder surgery for the first time. And subsequently, a, um, a Cuban physician, uh, Alberan, first used ureteric catheter in an open surgery. Subsequently, in the mid-70s, uh, Paul Zimskin uh, relieved uh, the obstruction when he used a tube for the first time. And it was subsequently James Monty used the term stent for the first time in the literature. McCullough used the uh, initial hook, which was uh, returned um, or uh, termed as Shepherd's Croc at the first time. And it was uh, Finney who developed the, what we know as the double J stent now. So we, you, um, we all know the current indication that we use to put a double J stent. These are, uh, have been published previously and uh, the last AUA guidelines have alluded to them. So when you do urethroscopy, you have residual fragments or you're encountering un unusual bleeding. If you have inadvertent perforation, if you're dealing with infective stone or the presence of previously bad infection or UTI, when you are treating a pregnant with, uh, with with stones or in a patient with urethral strictures, if you have used um, unorthodox uh, dilatation with a balloon or so forth, or if you are dealing with a solitary kidney or bilateral urethroscopy, those are the cases that we don't talk about the index patient. Those are known, you should leave a stent in them. Um, despite the beautiful advantage of stents, stents are not without complication. We all have been faced with the uh, miserable patient because of the symptoms of stents, notoriously the uh, storage symptoms, the flank pain, the uh, possibility of urinary tract. If you live in a country like my country in Saudi Arabia, which is big, a lot of people live in the desert and away from big cities, you may face a patient who would neglect their stone. In countries where they don't have good family doctors that keep track of patients with, uh, with double J stents, you may fa face a patient with what we have seen, a large staghorn and another uh, bladder stone. We have seen stone migration and the occasional hematuria. So those are the reasons why the literature have pushed us to look for um, reasons for not to stint these patient post urethroscopies. So uh, the um, uh, initial studies showed that routine stenting before urethroscopy was practiced widely. And um, it has been shown in the literature that urethroscopy intuitively will be much easier after you have a double J stent. Uh, it has been shown that it will give you a better stone-free result and causes less complication. But uh, in the latest AU, AAU guidelines, urethroscopy has been uh, concluded not uh, to require a stenting pre-op. Um, when we look at the issue of stenting or no stenting, it was uh, the initial Canadian group that, that looked into randomized control study of 58 patients where um, they would decide at the end of the study whether to stent the patient or not to stent. And there was no evidence of any differences in either stone free rate or complication. That study was 2001 and it was about 58 patients. Uh, and this was uh, followed by several uh, bigger studies. Um, in a randomized control study, Neto and his colleagues showed, looked at uh, 20, uh, 295 patients that they used only a rigid urethroscope. And again, they concluded the same thing. Stent didn't show to find uh, any um, benefits. And actually the opposite with the stents, you have more bothersome symptoms. In a uh, review of the literature in a meta-analysis by Fungfi and his colleagues in the Journal of Urology, in a systemic review of, uh, that includes 16 trials, uh, more than 1,500 patients, their conclusion was that urethral stent was 
associated with greater risk of lower urinary tract symptoms and pain, and that urethral stenting may not be necessary after urethroscopy. That was the biggest studies. But again, in most of those studies, um, we are left to bias. Most of those studies, unfortunately, because we're surgeon, it is left to you at the end of the study to decide, do I stent or not? So the decision of a complicated urethroscopy is more of a fluid definition. It's not a strict definition. The issue of urethral edema or a big stone or a prolonged procedure, these have not been uh, defined sharply in the literature. You spoke to an uh, expert like uh, Olivier Traxer, and you said, what is a prolonged procedure? He will tell you that a procedure lasting than two hours. But you t t see and read in the literature, some people are doing now staghorn or large stone more than two uh, centimeters. So again, um, these are fluid uh, uh, definitions. So um, again, in a subsequent review of the literature, Song and his colleague in urology research uh, look at 15 uh, randomized control uh, studies and imagine out of those 15, only two match the best standards. And again, as you uh, would uh, think, there was no difference in stone free rate or post-operative stricture as stinting caused actually more pain and um, a prolonged procedure as you may think from the time of uh, putting the stent. On top of that, the stent would cost uh, more pain. So again, uh, these, uh, this randomized control study suggests that despite there is no benefit of putting a stent, that we need a more rigorous studies to show uh, with a stronger evidence that it's not needed. Now, currently, where are we standing? Regarding the EAU guidelines, it's level 1A evidence that in uncomplicated urethroscopy, a stent need not to be placed. What about stenting after urethral access sheet? Now, if you pull the audience, a lot of people now are using urethral access sheet routinely. Despite the initial development of miniature urethroscope that we are, as urologists, trying to avoid the initial large complication associated by the large caribar urethroscope. But we are going back to introduce large urethral access sheet, but for beneficial reasons. Um, Traxer um, have demonstrated that up to 47% of urethroscopies using access sheet may be associated with various degrees of complication. Uh, mostly those complications are trivial. They will not be um, associated with stricture, but some of them can be severe enough to go uh, through and through reaching the periurethral fat. These are some of the studies that my colleagues have shown before. The uh, image on the right show you how deep the cut through the periurethral fat can be. Um, now, the initial studies, um, the Canadian group from uh, British Columbia have looked in a retrospective manner in patients who are stented versus non-stented. And though this was not uh, a study designed to look at the benefit of stent or not, uh, mostly of cost, but they found that ER visit of the people post uh, urethral access uh, usage and no stent were more than double of those who are stented. So that was 47 versus 37 percent. And for that reason, they recommend that you stent post urethral access sheet. And the Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Monga and his colleague looked into a comparison between two surgeons in almost 100 patients where they uh, retrospectively evaluated uh, 51 patients who were stented or 51 unstented. And uh, it was shown the group without stenting has the same stone-free result, but uh, there was decrease in post-operative pain. Now, some people would recommend anecdotally leaving urethral access sheet. Actually, in a retrospective study by Kawahara and his group from Japan, uh, in urethral 2013, looked again in a retrospective way where they uh, 
uh, looked at 93% uh, who had urethroscopy. Of those patients, 63 had urethral access sheet. What the surgeon would do, he would leave a five French urethral access, uh, urethral um, catheter, and would remove it the next day. And then they will categorize the patient, those with hydronephrosis or not. And they found out that patients with only urethral uh, catheter placed for 24 hours had very good outcome and net increasing uh, hydronephrosis or post-operative complication. And they recommend that early removal of urethral catheter can be safely performed. Now, in conclusion, I, I don't want to take up long from your time. As you can know, currently, uh, the definition of uncomplicated procedure is that of short, no perforation, no access sheet. With those cases, you do not stand. If you have any questions, you put a double J stand. Now, the non-index patient are those with solitary kidney, pregnancy, renal impairment, uh, or so forth. The, the use of urethral access sheet, a uh, prolonged procedure, when you have urethral injury, those should be stented. And again, regarding the usage or non-usage of stent with ure small urethral access sheet that has been um, uh, advised by some uh, authority, uh, we don't have level one evidence in the literature to say you do not need to stent after a small urethral access sheet. Thank you very much.